Hello and welcome to Insight Germany. My guest today is a famous chef in many parts of the world. In Argentina, where he comes from, in China, where his TV show is watched by hundreds of millions, and in Portugal, where he has a string of restaurants, and here in Berlin, where he has a restaurant and a TV show as well. He's so famous, he's known like Madonna, Bono, or Sting by just the one name, Chacal. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Great Thanks presentation you made. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Um, let's clear up the headgear straight away as we're on TV. You have a beautiful turban on. Yeah. Uh, it's a strange kind of uh, chef's hat. It is a chef hat also here in Germany. I think it's, it's worth because now it's a, in January it's a grey weather. So this is like having the heaven on my head. Uh, this is the story, this starts in Africa, I've been in Africa, actually with an English car. I drove uh, for two years a Land Rover from Lisbon to Cape Town, Cape Town, Cairo, Cairo, Lisbon. And uh, I started wearing a turban. Then came September 11, so it was not so such a good idea to walk in the street with a turban. I, even I don't look like an Arab, but uh, the people, is, it was a bit scary and that. And, and I started using chess for cooking and then become my sign. Yeah, it's become your trademark, I believe. Yeah. I read somewhere that you've had thousands of them and lost most of them, or have the lost or...? Still, still. They, I mean, it's happened a lot of things. I bought a lot. Every time I go to Morocco or to India, I bought 300, 400 turbans because I know people like my turbans and I, I offer. I don't sell my turbans. Then I forget and people steal, and I don't know. They are going on the way. So now I don't know how much, how many I have, but maybe 400, 500. And they Where are, do you get them made? Do you get them made here in Berlin? No, in Morocco. Oh, in Morocco? Morocco. Actually, I'm going uh, next week to Morocco and I'm going to buy maybe 200, 300 turbans. And I always <laughs> look for a special colors. And yeah. Now, you come from Argentina, as I mentioned, from Buenos Aires. We've got a map of Buenos Aires. We've actually put on the map Buenos Aires, but I, I believe it's just north. North, exactly. Of, Tigre. Of Buenos Aires. And Tigre, that's his main tiger in, in English. That means tiger. Yeah, I'm, I come from tiger. Yeah. I'm a son of the tiger. Yeah. And now it's a, it's a very famous delta. This is only 20 kilometers from, or 15 miles, if you want, so people understand. Uh, 15 miles. <laughs> we from, understand kilometers. Okay, yeah. but just in case. 15 miles from a city center of Buenos Aires. And it's a delta. It's one of the biggest delta in Latin America. It's, it's huge. And uh, it's a lot of rivers, a lot of mosquitoes overall. And then I grew up, so it was a very good place to grow up because uh, when it was, the tide was high, we didn't have school, so I, we love it. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Here's a picture you oh, sent us. This is, I was intrigued by this one, actually, of, of you as a child. Um, who's your friend? This is, this is the only prize I ever win in my life. It was a, a kind of lottery, and the, the first prize was this Pink Panther. And I don't know how, it, yeah, it was the Pink Panther. That's the Pink Panther, it was uh, taller than me. I mean, I was maybe uh, one, I was, uh, there was four years old, so maybe I was 140, and the Pink Panther was 160, was like huge for me. And uh, my tante make the lottery, and I won. I, and now, after 30 years, I think about us, maybe they just make me win. Yeah. So because I never ever uh -huh. win anything in my life. But never. you have since then. You've won many prizes. Yeah, well, prizes. We'll, we'll come to them. Why the name Chakal? Because I actually looked it up, and it, in the translation thing, and I couldn't That's find okay. anything because you've spelt it differently, haven't you? But so, what does it mean? You you mentioned before uh, a person who has something to be with just having one name. Uh, and it's a sting, but the name Chacal is because when I was five, six, seven years old, I was like a bit wild and I have four old, older brother and they say I was always like a chacal, like a chacal. So I was like a chacal, like, a, you know, the desert dog, I always looking my way, doing my own way. And, it, and it, it, it's in fact, I have a very similar character to the chacal. It's, I'm a social animal, but doing all, always what, what I think, not what the other things, what I think, but what I really feel. And that's why it came the name Chakal. Write it on this way is because of one of my best friends, uh, this was 20 years ago, died. And one month before dying, I was music critic, you know this part. I have a lot of CDs, so I always lent to my friends CDs to copy. On this time, there was no internet, no such a thing. And he, bring, I, I gave, he was a Rolling Stone fan. 
and I gave the collection of the Rolling Stones, all it was maybe 30 CDs, and he bring me bring it back. Always a sticker with Chakal, write it with C H A K A L L. Oh, so that's why you spell it like three, that. Three weeks later, he died, heart attack, 26 years old. He was my best friend, so I was uh, broke completely. That's it. After that, I called myself Chakal, writing on, on that way. That's nice. But I'm the Chakal. And only one name because when I was also, I don't know, maybe 15 or 14, I read an interview about the Sting. And when they ask why Sting, Andy, Andy Summers, no, what's his name? Uh, um, Gordon, oh, Gordon, Gordon, Matthew, Gordon, Summer. Gordon Matthew Summers. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, he said, why one name? He said, because I am like the gods and the dogs. They only have one name and they have a good life. So I want to be the same. And I was, okay. and after that, I also, I also I, sometimes I use this phrase, I say, I rephrase that it's from a Sting, that's like the gods and the dogs, just one name. Okay. Now, I know you come from a family who, uh, of cooks and chefs, but you didn't start in that, and you mentioned the Rolling Stones there. But you started as a music journalist, I yeah. think, and worked for Rolling Stone magazine. I worked the last three, I, I worked seven years for a newspaper, and the last three years I worked in, uh, in parallel uh, as a corresponsal in South America for Rolling Stone. So uh, I've been interviewing all kind of stars. Yeah, which, like... helps, which helps me a lot on these days. And a bit of a musician too. <laughs> that is that is my new TV show in Portugal. That's actually I mix in both things I like. I love food and music. So this is a, it's a show that's it's, I invite musicians to my house. They prepare one meal, one dish, and I make the other two dishes, and we play, and they make and sing, and it's always different. It's very funny. Very. I, I saw it yesterday, and it's. Uh, it's, it's different. It's, it's difficult to play the didgeridoo. Oh, it's very it? difficult. Very difficult. Uh, this guy, it's... this guy actually was there. He make cure, with the, you know, mm. with your bone. Mm. A little bit crazy. So what? I mean, you had a successful career as a journalist uh, uh, for, and worked for Rolling Stone and yeah. you loved music. You so what brought you to the kitchen then eventually? I didn't like uh, music anymore in one moment because I have so much. And I, I was thinking about, I mean, I was not feeling the music, I was thinking about music. And this is the problem between feeling and thinking. When you think the things, when you listen a song from whatever, and you, you think, oh, is this, this good because that, you don't enjoy it anymore. That's really strange, actually. I had exactly the same thing. I was a professional musician and I stopped and actually didn't do any music at all for about two years and then I... Again. Same thing. I couldn't. Yeah. I couldn't yeah. go into the CD, the, the CD shop or uh, uh, album shops to buy th things because I was watching all the time and saying, "Well, I don't want to listen. I'm so bored." So every every week I receive 50 CDs, and I was like, uh, some, "When some things from uh, pleasures become a job, and uh, it's not nice." And in one moment, I say, "I don't want to do this anymore." So the other thing I can do is cooking. I went to, to Europe because of this African trip. I went to England, I bought a Land Rover with an English mate from the Midlands, Mitch. Hello, Mitch, if you're there. And um, I, could, I didn't want to spend my money I have for uh, going to Africa. I get a lot of money from my newspaper when I left the newspaper, when I quit Argentina. And um, then the, the, um, the only thing I can do there was cooking not writing, I couldn't write in Portuguese, so I said, I'm going to a restaurant, and it was a coincidence, this restaurant, one and a half months later, was a successful restaurant in Lisbon. And I was cooking every day. I, I, didn't, I was not pretending to be a good chef. Actually, I went there to write. Aha, uh -huh. okay, okay. I, I wanna just ask you about your restaurant here in Berlin. I'll ask you why you came to Berlin after we see this, this report, but I need to know before we see the report, why you've named your restaurant in Berlin Sudaka, which to me is anything, but I happen to know this is not a nice word yeah. in Spanish. It's, it's, a, it's an, a, not a nice word coming from the Spanish people to the South American people. So it's like in, an insult. And it's, uh, you, 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 you say before, it's like gringos, much worse, like South American immigrants don't come to work here. And this is like a very bad word. But to me, words are nothing. And, uh, and I think it's funny if I say, if I, if I were black myself, I will call the restaurant the black because I'm proud to be whatever I am. Yeah. So I am proud if uh, I have a funny story, the Cottbus, you know Cottbus, the team, the, the director from Cottbus come- Cottbus football team. Cottbus, yeah, he come yeah. always, come uh, always to the restaurant. I say, look, if I, were, if, if I were Aussie, I will call my restaurant the Aussie 
because Aussie, the, uh, yeah, we have to explain that's a, yeah. a rude word. It's the, it's Aussie this, is the word for east. Yeah, and, yeah, and, and it's a rude word. It's yeah. a rude word. I think yeah. uh, something is rude if you take it. If you don't take it, it doesn't matter. They it's can't just words, it. isn't it? It's just words. Yeah, exactly. That's all. And it's just right. words and say, I am what I am. It doesn't matter what the people think yeah. and I, because I know what I think. I always have a Peter Sellers phrase that's say in any uh, just short, you know, the movie, The Party. I love that movie. I mean, too. I have seen it like 25 times. Yeah. It's this one part in the movie that's uh, it's the American guy who is playing American and uh, he's trying to get the, the girl, Michelle. And Michelle is falling in love a little with him, with the Indian guy. And the guy say, who do you think you are? And I say, in India, my friends, we don't think what we are. We know who we are. We'll leave it there. Yeah. Time to visit Chakal's restaurant here in Berlin, but first he invited us to his home. Chakal in his kitchen at home. Where does this passion for cooking come from? I don't think it's a passion, it's more of a family karma. I am the fourth generation of chefs. I wouldn't say that it is a choice. When I think about cooking, I don't really think. It's automatic. A writer writes automatically, I guess. A football player has a natural talent for the ball. It's like that for me with cooking. Of course, he's using his own recipe for this ginger cake. But is there anything genuinely new in the world of cookery? The basics are already there. You can only really reinvent. There are variations on a theme. It's like reinventing the wheel. You can use different materials, make it lighter, faster or slower. But I haven't been surprised by anything for some time. Not even in Latin American cuisine? Each country has its specialities. Brazil has delicious food, especially stews. In Argentina, it's meat and Italian influences. Peruvian food is unique and influenced by Japanese cuisine. Latin America is full of outside influences. We don't just eat quinoa like the Incas did. While the ginger cake bakes, there's time to discuss more and drink mate, a kind of Argentinian tea. Then it's time to test the fruits of Chacal's labour. There's a piece for our cameraman too. Over to the kitchen of Chacal's restaurant in Berlin, Sudaka, a name full of irony and provocation. Here he has a golden rule. There must be mutual respect. Of course, it's a job. Not everyone can be friends after work. We are here to do our job, and everyone does what he has to do. Good teamwork is essential. And what makes the food here special? Everything is homemade. The bread, everything. And handmade. The potatoes are cut by hand. We only buy primary produce and work with it here. Even the desserts. Time to plate up. Buen provecho. I must ask you straight away, what brought you to Berlin, actually? Because we'll talk a bit about the countries you've been to. You've been, I think you're my, my, my most travelled guest that really? I've ever had. Well, You've been to 90 countries? More, more than 100 already. More than 100? Yeah, this, my, the VOS is all, yeah, more than I, I know whole Latin America, whole. I make with a motorbike, Lisbon, Mexico, uh, Lisbon, Buenos Aires, Mexico. I make 27 countries in Africa, around Africa, I mean, on the coast, all Europe and quite a lot of Asia. So if you put all together, this is... And you've ended up in Berlin? Yeah, well... In Germany, yeah. Love, kids, Ah, it's love. It. Yeah, yeah, I have a German wife and uh, German kids. So that's the reason because uh, the first, my wife st uh, lived for three years in Portugal and she didn't like it. She didn't feel comfortable. She came from Hamburg and we live in a small village 60 kilometers north from Lisbon. I, al I always like to live in a small village nearby. Yeah. Not anymore. But I live in the center of Berlin. But... Uh, she went there, they would stay three years, she didn't like, she didn't feel comfortable. So she go, we, I bought a house in Berlin and I say, okay, so I'm going up and down, up and down, and now I'm up and up. And you said there that you have German children. Yeah. Do you really think so, or aren't they a mix? They are mixed, of course, but I mean, they live in Germany and I think the education, where you were educated is your nationality. Mm. My son, I mean, the nationality is the football team. This is the nationality of the person. I know people who live for four years in a place and say, oh, say which, which team you follow? And you ask a Turkish son or whatever, they will say Turkey. You ask me and you know what I am. 
which one I'm going to follow. I mean, I lived for 20 years in Portugal. I really like Portugal, uh, Portuguese people, also football, but my team is the hand of God, mm. you know, that's... <laughs> <laughs> we might, we might, uh, yes, change, the hand of God. subject. <laughs> I wasn't going to bring it up, but you brought it up, you know. Okay. But you, ha you yourself have really mixed roots, don't yeah. you? I mean, a bit of... Swiss, yes, for my, my father's side is both sides. My father is Spanish, uh, Galician and Asturian. My mother have uh, the father of my mother is half Swiss, half Indian from north of Argentina, and the mother is half French, half Italian. Hmm. So I'm French, Italian, uh, Spanish, Swiss, German, and Indian, North in Indian or log native, may I say? And you obviously native. you obviously tried to see. All, well, this is another one, but you are, all these backgrounds, you obviously this is why you have, if I say itchy feet, you've travelled around the world. This is a picture you sent us. Where's yeah. this? This is in China. This is in... Uh, what's going on? Oh, this is I'm making a, my cooking show and I'm in the last part of the meal, I invite people to eat to try the food. So I make a mix of China and Western food. What I'm doing, I'm cooking with pingua in, in Chinese. Pingua, what's apple. Apple. And they love apples. And they will say with the kids. So I, I do a lot of things with kids. And they, when I was saying, and I was making, they're gonna try the. Uh, so it was funny. This this is in Ningxia. It's a north province in China, which are Muslim. It's a really interesting place. A lot of desert. And when I, when it's, I think the good thing of traveling and doing TV shows or whatever is that you see the people are all the same. It doesn't matter the religion, it doesn't matter the color, it doesn't matter nothing. They are all the same. Kids are kids, farmers are farmers. It doesn't matter where you are. It could be an English, could be an Argentina. And believe me, a farmer from Argentina and a farmer from England are much more closer than a farmer from uh, England and a city, uh, a guy from London. Okay. In yeah. every way, or in every aspect. And you told me before we came on air that the most amazing food and most expensive food in the in world... In China is in it China. Is, it is amazing. I mean, the high level Chinese food is amazing. It's, yeah. it's the NBA for me on cooking. Yeah. It is really, really amazing. The way, the skills they have, the skills and the, every person do a job, which make a big difference with us. No, we need one guy to make three, four, five different things, but they are so specialized. I have seen guys cutting meat, uh, slicing meat, thinner almost than a machine. And perfect, you know, tsh, 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 with a knife like this. Not we have a, we Western chefs. We have twenty-five knives to make a, eight, fifteen things. They have one knife for everything, and they do it perfect. Let's talk about German cuisine because Which one? sort of traditionally okay. the, the, the cliche okay. is of sausages and sauerkraut. Uh, sauerkraut and that, but it's uh, come on, it's got much better. No, this in is the a, in, in the south of Germany. I think the food is really good. In Bayern, it's really good. It's top level. It's no. So uh, we, we talk about salty food, no? Because desserts, they are really good. I, I think north of Europe, Germany, the desserts are really good because they have not a lot of sugar. The weather helps to have a good dessert because if you make cream, you, you make a white cream, uh, you need cold. So food is always related to weather, to clima, always. Yeah. So when we talk about traditional food from Germany, there is not or there is uh, in the pan, in the, the things that you need to cook over because there, is, there were not uh, fresh vegetables, fr not fresh fruits, instead only two months a year, three months a year. Today, yeah, I was it's say, completely this is, different. Yeah. It's completely different. So I think you can eat as good in Germany as in France or in Italy, in a good restaurant, of course, not everywhere. But uh, South German food, I think is great. What they make with pork, they really cook pork as masters. In, in any way, any any kind of art. So the the Schweinebrat, you know, there is really good. North Germany, I don't know. I, I've been doing this TV show, traveling in whole Germany, so I have a small idea about German food. It's quite poor, and uh, most of the time I I just eat Wiener Schnitzel. So, and I'm happy. Wiener Schnitzel, is Wiener Schnitzel. Course, meat. Um, <laughs> <laughs> You don't serve German meat in your restaurant, no. though, do you? Uh, we serve lamb. I mean, it's German, we serve lamb, German lamb, and chicken. Maybe when we make no, <laughs> no, we serve uh, Argentinian, mainly, mainly South American. Argentina also have sometimes problem of exportation. I don't know government things, and uh, we buy Uruguay, which is most of the time good as Argentinian. The thing is, Argentinian meat is not. I don't think it's the best. 
but it's the best in quantity quality. In quantity quality. quality. So, so you, okay. you're sure when you buy Argentinian meat that you have a level of quality, which is, if we say zero to 10, is always over seven. Yeah. When you buy Uruguayan, sometimes 10, sometimes four. And, and why, why is it so much better? Is it the, is it the weather? Is the is weather it the fact is that the, the, cows... the quantity, the size of the country. You know, Argentina is, yeah. Uruguay is smaller than Buenos Aires. Mm. So if you, if you put this, and uh, I think in Argentina, the, the cattle is 70 million mm. cattle or 80 million cattle, it's two per habitant. Most of the, the, only the good meat is supported. And you go to Uruguay, how many, how many cows they can have? Three million, four million, I don't know. So, uh, and they, 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 they doesn't have so, such a big uh, possibility to choose this or that or that. In Argentina is a lot of meat. It's a lot of good meat in the north of Spain, in Italy, in France, but not the quantity that we need for, mm. for feeding the world as Argentinian. I wanted to show another picture. This, this is you on your travels, isn't and it? And Pulga. Pulga is my dog. It's very yeah, famous. Yeah, yeah. Very famous dog. I know, he's very famous in very China. Famous. Now this is, she's famous in Portugal. She's a Portuguese dog. This is my TV show in Portugal. This is called Chacal Un Pulga. Yeah. Pulga is my dog. And we travel in Portugal. We make three series all together around us, Portugal, Spain, and Morocco. Yeah. And uh, now I stop. I, the problem of doing TV shows, traveling, it takes a lot of time to two, three days for a show. So yeah. That, and I don't have the time. And you, in your cuisine, I believe you, you mix uh, all sorts of cuisine because you've been around the world. Is there anything from the German cuisine you take? Yeah, it is always, always, always. always. Also, with uh, the TV show I have with the chefs, I learn from them. I learn from everything. You go to a restaurant and you are surprised for this or that. In Berlin is, we cannot say, it's a typical German city or typical German cuisine because, I mean, you eat everything but German food here in Berlin. I mean, you, you need to go to a special place. In the, is this a big yeah. difference with the rest yeah. of Germany in Bayern, yeah. mostly? But it, it's kind of like any capital, really. Any capital, really. There's, uh, I mean, I'm thinking of my capital, if you like, London. Yeah, well, well, I mean, when you talk about countries which doesn't have a history, food history, as a good England. Yeah, we won't. You, we we yeah. don't talk yeah. about England anymore. We'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll take a short break there. But we'll talk about that while the film's <laughs> on. We've heard about your travels around the world and that Lisbon is now your second home. Let's have a look at Lisbon, which has become quite cosmopolitan, and our guide is a German who settled there. Like Rome, Lisbon is a city built on seven hills. No visit is complete without a ride on one of the city's historic trams. The Portuguese still use the Santa Justa elevator, which is more than 100 years old, to get to the upper part of town. The views are fantastic. Each year, Lisbon attracts more than 3 million tourists. Daniela Critch stopped by 14 years ago and immediately fell in love with the metropolis known as the White City because of its special light and architecture. She never left. For me, Lisbon is a puzzle made up of various centuries. Every district has its own charm and its own architecture and it's been preserved quite well through the years. And within a single day you can see everything from beautiful stone mansions to the tiniest of apartments where people live elbow to elbow. The Alfama is the old city center and has an authentic and romantic atmosphere. The narrow alleys and small houses attest to its humble past. Painted tiles are one constant feature of the city. They were introduced to Portugal by the Moors from North Africa. Instead of painting on canvas, people painted tiles that were intended to tell stories. Patrician houses would issue commissions, as did churches and monasteries. And tiles also decorated the exteriors of ordinary houses. They're still made by hand today, and the tile work continues on the interior. The former expo grounds to the east of the city are modern, almost futuristic. The site was home to the 1998 World's Fair. Now it's used for leisure activities, residences and businesses. Pastéis de Belén is a tourist magnet. Since 1837, this establishment has served pastels, the pudding-filled treats for which Portugal is famous. They're equally popular with locals and visitors. 
It's a soft crust filled with vanilla cream. It's not too sweet and it comes topped with cinnamon and powdered sugar if you want. It's served warm and it melts in your mouth. And what better end to the day than a night of fado, traditional Portuguese music, in a romantic Lisbon restaurant. My guest is the Argentinian chef Chacal, who now has four restaurants in Lisbon. Yes. One of which was awarded a Michelin star. Yes. Um, and I say sort of was because uh, I don't... Bring it back. We say we don't, we don't want it. Why? Why someone? I mean, I was critic. It's, I mean, it's a problem of conscience I have. I was critic, music critic for many years. And I criticized people who uh, play 20 times better than me and things and they understand music 100 times better than me. I say, why should I criticize this person, who I am? But it's not a critic, a, a critic, well... It is. But it, no, it is. It's a, it is come someone. on, it's an Oscar, isn't it? Yeah, but... For your movie, I yeah, mean, for your but then, when, but then this Oscar, the difference is the Oscar, you get an Oscar in, in, uh, in, uh, in Hollywood and it's all, yours all, always, for, forever. So if they give you an Oscar, and next year say, we have to bring you back the Oscar because you don't okay. uh, pretend to be as we think that you should be. You don't do that. You know, I don't do the restaurant for criticism. I do it for my customers. I hope the food is good always. I, I try to improve all the time, everything, but I'm, I don't want to be the, under the pressure of someone say, now we give you this, you're gonna have a 30% more incomes, and now we take it out, so you are a disaster. So I don't wanna be, the master, I don't want to be the small, I wanted to be myself and I wanted to do the things as a free will, not like saying, oh, now you need one more employee or two more employees because otherwise they're gonna take you the start. And I have many friends with Stars Michelin. The ones they have one, they are paranoid to lost it and they are always dreaming to have the second one. So the one who have second, they don't, are not fulfilled because they don't have the third. They are a bit better than the first but they always, and the thing is they agree and they put it one, it's gonna be a catastrophe. So why people should live like that? So it's like living with a gun on your head. And it mm. is, and they, and, and they give a lot of stress. And the first thing of all is I don't wanna have a stress from someone else, so sorry, I'm touching there. I don't wanna have a stress from, uh, from anyone. I think, I mean, you're not alone. Quite a few give it back. I mean, Marco yeah, Pierre yeah. Wang, I Pierre think Wang, gave yeah. three, yeah. his three back, yeah? It is, yeah. And, and it's a business, you know, mm. it's business. Mm from any side, from Michelin side and everything is a business. And uh, it's not my business, that's all. If it were my business, if I have a part of this business, probably I, I will have no problem, but it's not my business. Why um, did, don't you settle in, oh, well, I mean, you've told us why you don't settle in Lisbon now, but uh, because you're white, but, actually... but, but you, you travel so much, you've been everywhere, what, what, what keeps you in Berlin? I know you, your wife is German, she wants to be here, but you could go, you could go anywhere in the I, world. You could go to New York, yeah, you could go to I London. Think, I think Berlin is the city since 10 years, and I don't know, maybe for another 10 years, it's the city. I really like also Lisbon in this side, it's similar in a different way, it's a bit undeveloped in, if you compare to London, to Paris, to Madrid even. So I have a way, but now it's twisting. And it is good to be in the moment of the twisting. So I think I bought a house in the right moment in Berlin. I, have, I make a restaurant in the right moment in Berlin because everything is twisted in a, in a positive way. And I like this mix and this uh, unpretentious things. I love London, but it's only for rich people. Mm -hmm. So Berlin is the same, have everything, but you don't need to be rich to enjoy the city. And uh, I, 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 I might not have problem to live in London, for ex except the four or five months, the nine months the weather. Beside that, is, there is no... <laughs> well, yeah, what about the weather here? Oh, well, it's terrible, it's terrible, it kills me. That's yeah. just, uh, but I'm always away. You know, in January, February, I usually in February, I work in Miami in a, in a food festival on the beach. And so I'm in Miami for a week with Sun. In December also, sometimes I travel to Brazil or things because of shows. So it's not so bad because I don't have to suffer every day. But if, if I have to suffer every day, it's gonna be hard. But it's good for your kids. I, I believe, I, I know, we'll come to the questionnaire a bit, but I think you said one, uh, one of the positive things was education. Education is yeah. great. I think yeah. education is good and I, 
I'm happy my kids have, are better educated than me. You know, I have a, not a pure education, but normal education in Argentina. I think it was before than now, states, government education, but I think he is great. My son, so you can see how is the level of education and, uh, and responsibility, you know, because for us, not, I don't know in England, but in Argentina, education is nothing to do with responsibility. So here, it's both things together. So my son had fear from me because to arrive late. So he had a training two days ago and I say, I say, no, papi, I don't want to go with you. Why? Because I have fear you came late and I arrived late. And he's like 10 years old. I say, well, he knows me. But you speak uh, uh, Spanish with your Spanish, children? Spanish. They speak German. When did you, because you speak a lot of languages. Um, I pretend. You pretend? Yeah. How, how did you learn German? Did you have to go to school? I went two weeks course. Two weeks? Yeah, two weeks. I'm good for language. I mean, I have a, I'm, don't speak any language uh, perfectly, far, far away from perfect, but I do understand most of the things and uh, I have a fast mind. Now I'm thinking in German, that's the problem. I'm always a bit this schnell, schnell. Yeah, I'm, schnell is schnell, fast. Yeah, yeah. And uh, always linking the things fast. And uh, English also, I never learned English, I just watching movies and traveling. I, I traveled for two years with an English mate in Africa. But do you mix the languages in your head? How do, are you uh, translating right now? I'm No, I'm not translating. The, the problem is now we are in Germany and I have the German chip in my head. So once I'm in a place, I have the, the, the chip. I went, German and English are similar to me in my head. No, like uh, Spanish, Portuguese, Italian are very similar. French is close, but it's not so close. Arabic is another thing, so you, you, don't, you never mix it. So and sometimes when I'm in Germany and I have to speak English, I use some German words because it's come first to my mind and then I have to translate. But the problem is to translate is I don't know in Spanish. So I, like it's happened to you before, I don't know what the word is because I don't remember the word in Spanish. So the Spanish probably is the last language I'm, I'm, I'm look for the, the word because I don't use it for many, for many, many years. Spanish as the first language. I live in Portugal for 70 years, 17 years, not 70. It look very good now for some <laughs> and, uh, yeah. and uh, so Spanish is always far away from me. Oh wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well you have you have many more languages than, than me, but I know what you mean about mixing them. Yeah. yeah. Um, you talked about your TV program here, Beef Buddies as it's called, not one for vegetarians. Hate You've, vegetarians hate the beef buddies. Yeah. yeah. You've 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 talked about you said the best meat is the the pork in the south. Yeah. What's, um, which part of Germany? I mean, because you've traveled really all over. Yeah, yeah. Which part do you like the most? I mean, not, not because Landscape. of the cooking. Landscape or I, people. I, I don't know. I think know. it's every, every place. If you ask me which is my favorite country in the world, just go in a no, bit. No, far. no, 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 no. Germany, I mean, yeah, favorite yeah. part of Germany. But I mean, it's just to compare. Yeah. No? yeah. Well, I think I like more the south than the north because of weather. The landscapes are beautiful and the north is quite flat. It's on the, it's the, the, the sea on the wind yeah. is very strong. Yeah. So I've been in, it's different. I think I prefer the Schwarzwald, the, the, what's the black, black forest, forest. the black forest or Bayern. Um, but there is a small places in Köln, there's the Ber Bergland, I think. In, it's in a, Cologne, in, the Bergland. Yeah, yeah. they're very nice also. It is, I prefer the south instead of north because of... You're uh, actually saying, though, it actually is, it has so much, Germany, I find. It's got lots of different... A lot of different, it's then difficult then to say. There's the, there's the, what do they call it, the, um, where they call it, the something Switzerland. Um, Saxon Switzerland, have you ever been there? Nee. Oh, you should go there. Beautiful. We had it on the programme the other, it's extraordinary. It just yeah? doesn't look like Germany at all. In a Saxon Anhalt or... Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, What's the best way to cook meat? Is it to grill it? Of course, salt meat, that's all. You need the, the, the right salt, that's the important thing. The right salt? The right uh, big, the size of the salt. Oh, I see. The, 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 it's not just the salt, they have to be right. So when you use the right salt, it's very easy. And you just put salt before, grill one side, another side, finish, nothing else. We do it Burn like it that. here first, I, really? Yeah. It's as simple as that. But well, but you we, need the right meat from yeah. the right. In Argentina, we, we learn so first to grill and then we to walk, so. Okay, before I grill Chacal more, let's have a look at some culinary grilling here in Germany and barbecuing nowadays 
isn't just about a few men standing around the hot coals with a few beers and overcooking the sausages like I do. It's become much more sophisticated than that. Juicy steak with green pea frittatas, hamburgers with dried tomatoes and sweet onions, and Scottish fillet of salmon with wild berry garnish. It's not what you'd expect to be offered at the average barbecue in Germany. These 20 people, 19 men and one woman, are taking part in a course to widen their culinary repertoire. The courses are held in a former monastery in the town of Ingelheim in southwestern Germany by chef Bart Moos. He says good outdoor cooking requires the proper techniques. Whether the barbecue is wood-fired, gas-powered or electric, most food should be cooked over indirect heat with the lid on. That ensures the food cooks faster and more evenly. There are a few tricks to improve the flavour too. These are cedar wood planks. They've been soaked in water. You can use them for smoking. Whatever you cook on them acquires a smoked flavour. The first items on today's five-course menu are hot dogs, seasoned with balsamic vinegar and red wine. It's a new taste sensation for course participants used to sausages with mustard and pork chops with gravy. They're finding out that you can also grill food outdoors in bad weather and that the most important thing is the preparation. These days, the work is made easier by high-end equipment. Specialist stores like this one in Mainz sell all kinds of gadgets to make the experience more convenient, including designer grills, fancy tongs and recipe books. Back to Bart Moose's barbecue school. For him and his colleague Aaron Goodflesch, first-class outdoor cooking begins with a shopping trip. And not just to the butchers. They consider variety to be the spice of barbecuing life. You can barbecue anything. Whatever you can cook in a kitchen, you can cook on a grill. The only thing I don't grill is pasta. But I barbecue everything else, cake, bread, meat, vegetables, fish, anything and everything that occurs to me. Even ice cream has found its way onto the grill of the Belgian-born cook. For dessert, the course participants are making barbecued ice cream bombs. The frozen interiors are completely coated with whipped egg white before being popped on the grill for a few moments. My guest is the Argentinian chef Chacal, and I haven't mentioned the many cookbooks he's written and received awards for, and we've got one here to give away, signed by the man himself. Write to us... Actually, you haven't signed it yet, but you will. I will, I will, yeah, I will. Yeah. Um, uh, write to us at insight at dw.de if you're interested, and don't forget to include your postal address in case you're the lucky winner of the draw. Yeah. And a credit, a credit card number and a, P, a PIN. <laughs> <laughs> credit card number and a PIN. OK. Yeah. As, you as you mentioned there, you can't fry an egg on a grill. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, have a, I have a news that no one knows. Uh, I received two days ago, no one know, but, but no one is no one because I forgot to tell. I received an email two days ago. My, I have just published uh, two books in China in June and they've been awarded as a best cook book in China. Really? Yeah, yeah. Actually, I was going to ask you, you've actually got loads of awards. I haven't got time. We haven't got much time left. I can't name them all, yeah, the awards something. you've got for your books. But what, you know, there's loads of cookery books, to yeah, be honest. Lots, what, lots. Make, what makes yours stand out in a crowded market? I don't know. I really don't know. I, say, I, I think it's, uh, they are very simple. So I, I'm, I use my journalist side, so simplified everything. You know, when you need, you have 100 yeah. words and you say... Uh, the, the, the chef redactor said, you need to do this all the same in 20 words. Yeah. So I do the things with the food. So I take the complicated things and I simplify it very simply, very simplified. I had a quick look and it's true. And I should mention this book is actually in German, but it's a great way to learn some German. It's a great way and to learn German. Because it's pictures and you, you don't... You I know. learn from my own book also. Really? Yes. No. Yeah, OK, <laughs> OK, OK. Um, what about German chefs? Are Germans good cooks? I'm they are good as anyone. I think today's technique is worldwide spread, so they are not better or worse than anyone. I mean, they are perfectionists, which is very good, 
but the taste is innerate, it came with you. So, I mean, you can have the great technique, but if you don't have a great taste, it doesn't matter what you do, because technique is technique. It's like musician. No? There is musician who have an amazing technique to play, but they cannot compose anything. Mm. And I think with food, it's more or less the same. And the good thing with German, they are perfectionists. What you, whatever you say to them, they do it. If you compare with us Latins, that would be wild. Uh, but the other side is also, this is pro and against on both sides. When you do something is a little bit artistic. No, I might say cooking is not artistic, but have a, a little bit of artistic. And I think this is the, the, the bad point. But yeah. people is people, so yeah. it doesn't matter where they come from. We haven't got, I've just got the question. We haven't really got time for that. I do want to ask you one final question though. Dun, 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 we dun, dun, are dun, dun. now in 2014. We know what's happening in South America this year, this thing called the Football World Cup. We also know, and we, I should ask you, um, could a European, and I'm particularly thinking of the German team, because they're one of the best in, in Europe, could a European team win the World Cup in South America? I think we already paid the charges that it doesn't happen. So everything is organized in South America. When we organize something, we really organize. So it's never gonna be a champion of Europe, I think, in South America. It doesn't matter if they play or not. Well, I don't know, maybe it could be. I think Brazil have the big uh, chances. Argentina, I don't know, if it's an open question. We have the best player in the world, but I Messi? don't know. Messi? Yeah, it was no. Higuain or the Messi? Messi, 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 Messi. Yeah. far away. For me, no, of course, there is always a question, but if you, if you have seen football, if you like football, this is uh, an ex and it's experience yeah. to watch it. Yeah. It's Maybe been great it's... talking to you, Chakal. It's Thank gone in, in minutes. We've been talking for 45 minutes. I can't I, believe I it. I have a fast news for you. Very quick. Messi's moving to Arsenal. Messi's moving to <laughs> Arsenal. Well, that's an in-joke, I'm afraid. That's it for this edition of Inside Germany. Thanks to my guests, wonderful chef, Chakal. Thank you for watching. Please join me at the same time next week for another guest. And until then... Don't forget to write in for the cookbook, insight at dw.de. Bye-bye.